right, this is the visualizing food insecurity code pattern um, that you can find on IBM's GitHub. Um, so basically what this goes into is how to take a data set, analyze it, kind of like tear it apart and understand it and then visualize it. So the visualization actually helps you understand the data and it also helps communicate um, your vision, your findings, um, the message you're trying to get across. So for this code pattern in particular, food insecurity is being focused on. Um, food insecurity is a kind of um, a, a general term used for a very complex issue that considers racial inequality, income inequality, lack of food access, and their co the consequences that come with that, um, such as diet-related diseases like obesity and diabetes, heart disease, um, anything related um, to that. So they're all tied together and intertwined. So um, there's actually some government data available, luckily, which is really nice, um, which is from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, as well as the United States Department of Agriculture. And we have it combined here in a CSV file that you can find on this repo. Um, so basically what we're taking you through is how to start up data science experience, or DSX, um, and use Spark on top of it, which is actually automatic. Um, it, it, it just lays right on top of DSX. And then using some libraries to actually analyze the data, look at correlations, and then also visualize them. And then we're going to take the data frame we create there, download it, and then put it into IBM Watson Analytics and visualize it in a different way. Um, and that's basically what this external picture is, is coming up with all of our visualizations and putting them together in one giant one. Um, so this README actually walks you through all of the steps, um, but you will end up creating a data science experience account as well as an um, oh, Watson Analytics account. So those are important. It's also helpful if you have some familiarity with Python, but if you're new to Python, not to worry. Um, you can follow along. I've already created the notebook, and there's a link in this README that will take you directly to the created notebook where you can just look at the output and kind of look at what everything's doing. If you want to implement it on your own, you can download um, the notebook from this GitHub, and then you can try and implement it on your own in DSX. Um, so, all right, that's that. So let's get started. This is what it looks like in D um, DSX. Um, so what you have already done to get to this point is either you follow the link I gave you after you created an account, otherwise you create a project, um, which and then you are in my projects, and then you're going to create um, a notebook. So I write, I'd call this notebook um, di uh, Diet Related Disease Exploration. And before that, if you're doing it on your own, you've already uploaded your data and everything, and you inputted it in, from this button right here. But if you're following along, there's no need to worry about that. So I'll give you a brief background here in the beginning, much like the README and the blog. And then I kind of go into what DSX is, what Pixie Dust is, what IBM's Watson Analytics is. Um, so let's start with DSX. You import everything you need, all of the libraries. And then this is supposed to be hidden, but you can see. Um, basically, you put all of your information in so that you can use it and import the data. Make sure if you're doing this on your own, the data frame is saved as data frame data one. DSX should do this automatically, but just to make sure if you're getting any errors, you might want to check that out. All right, so cleaning data and exploring. So just looking at the columns, describing, um, looking at them uniquely, um, like each one by one, um, looking at the correlation, you can already begin to see there's a lot of data here. There's a lot of variables. A lot to work with. So we look at the correlation. Again, that's a lot of information. How do you dissect that? Um, so just looking at um, a bit of its, its basic statistics and information. Um, so then I go in and I'm like, okay, well, what variables are we most interested in? This is food insecurity. All right, so we start looking at uh, percent SNAP participation rate. SNAP is a federal aid program. And then percent obese adults. We look at food insecurity and percent percent obese adults. And then, you know, I mentioned here after looking at the data, I'm really only interested in seeing a connection between certain values that are directly related to food insecurity because the scope of this code pattern is just not big enough to dive into all of it. So I try and gather across all of the different variables that are of interest. Um, then I remove any of <laughs> the zeros or null values um, just to clean it up a little bit. And then I do another heat map. 
um, this is a little bit friendlier, a little bit more user friendly. So we can kind of see what's correlated and what we want to look at, which is awesome. So I start to use Seaborn and I, I plot some, some graphs here. Um, and here's a positive relationship between the percent of white in the population and SNAP, SNAP participation rate, meaning that the, um, the higher the percentage of, of uh, the white population, the higher the use of the SNAP federal aid. Um, then we look at SNAP uh, participation rate in percent Hispanic, and it's actually a negative relationship. So then we look at reduced lunch, which is another federal aid program where kids who are from lower income families are usually able to get um, a lower priced lunch. And then we look at percent Hispanic and we see there's a positive relationship. Um, then we see percent of black in the population and percent diabetes, and we see a positive relationship correlation. And then we look at percent diabetes and percent obese adults, and that's definitely a high correlation, a positive relationship. So um, we see we learn a lot from just visualizing those um, very simple graphs. All right, so now let's try and visualize with Pixie Dust. It's just a library that you can import, similar to the the different libraries we imported at the very beginning. And all you have to type is display and then the data frame name. So we're using data frame focused values, which is the smaller data frame um, with less variables. Um, so what you initially get is actually just this table, um, which is which is great and useful to use. But when you first um, execute it, there's um, a little button that you can push and you can actually choose what visualization you want, which is super helpful. So you choose what variables you want and what you want to title it and um, what kind of library you want to use, Seaborn, Bokeh, Matplotlib, um, and, and then you can go ahead and do it. So I have a bunch of different um, examples right here. So food insecurity by state, um, and then percent of population that is black versus percent of population that is obese, obesity versus diabetes, and we, it goes on and on. So um, if you're more interested, you can take a look in the notebook. Um, right here, I kind of go into how to take the data frame and download it as a CSV file. It's a little bit complicated in DSX, at least more so than um, in typical Python. So if you're having trouble with that, make sure to follow along right here. Um, and then what we do is we take that, you, you collect it from your object storage, and then you can upload it here. Um, so once you have an, a Watson Analytics um, account, you can go in here and you can upload new data, the data frame focus value. So I already did that. I have a bunch of other data here. <laughs> um, and then what you can do is you can go into Discover. And so it will immediately, um, you can load it. I already made some, some discoveries of my own, but what it will normally do is it will go ahead and recommend different types of visualizations for certain variables. So for example, over here in the visualization, recommended is bar decision tree summary. Of course, I didn't pay attention to that. I just wanted to show you what a, <laughs> a predictive spiral looks like. So it might not be the best visualization, but it certainly is fun. But you can go in and you can try out a whole other bunch of ones yourself. Um, so what we see here is what drives the percent of diabetes in adults. And what we get is food insecurity and percent obese adults as number one, 53%. We also have SNAP participation rate, which again is federal aid and percent obese adults. Um, we have percent white and obese. We have percent obese and percent reduced lunch, which indicates um, low income. Percent adults in general. <laughs> Soda tax and food insecurity. So these are all very interesting. Let's see what else we find. All right, so this is just a different way to visualize the same thing. Let's see on that maybe. All right, so food insecurity by state. So we see uh, Texas um, stands out a great deal as long as several others. Um, and then let's see what other map we have here. And all of these visualizations are explained in the blog. So if you wanna look at my conclusion, you can definitely check it out there. Um, then we see percent of diabetes. Um, we see a lot of overlap there. We see a um, map of percent reduced lunch. Let's see, it's like, come up, there we go. So that looks different. 
Okay, I'll just show you one more and then we'll move on to the final one. All right, so this is an example of a heat map, what you would get with percent white versus percent diabetes. All right, so once you do the discovery, which again, once you upload your data, it will automatically start to suggest different discoveries right here. And um, I don't think I showed you, but here, let's go here one more time. It will actually have discoveries for you over on the right-hand side if you want to use that which is really useful. So if maybe you don't catch something or you didn't think to use it in that way, all of these are over here in addition to the recommended um, visualizations over here. And um, this is actually where you're going to input all the variables down here. Um, and there is actually a table in the root code that explains what all the variable names are. If you are confused, so don't get scared by that. Um, but they show up all down here and you can drag and drop. Okay, let me show you what you can do at the very end. If you want to share your information, let's say you learned a whole bunch and you want to share it with your friend, or you're actually making a presentation for someone and you really want to showcase what you've done, um, you can go here to display and you can take your information. I already created one. Um, and you can just use the visualizations you saved and discover. So you don't have to recreate them. You can, you can drag them over. And you can basically just put them all together um, and you can share it. So you can share it as an image, you can share it with a link. Um, both are available in this repo. And it's really useful because you can just kind of drag them around. And so I made sure to put all the maps right, right next to each other. And then food and security by state. So it goes along with the maps and just kind of put them together in a way that makes sense to you. What's really useful about this is it's really easy to generate visualizations very quickly. Um, so if you're in a time crunch or you're just trying to get to know your data better, this is a really great option. Same with Pixie Dust and the other libraries we discussed. Um, and, but also if you have a more detailed project we need to work on a little bit more, this allows you the flexibility to look at all kinds of different visualizations. Um, but now you're equipped with all these different techniques. Um, <laughs> I know that you're going to do awesome. Um, I challenge you to go out and, and do a better job and, and go into detail and really figure out some issues with food insecurity and share it with others. Um, it's, it's something plaguing the US, it's going globally, um, it's something that needs to be discussed. It's a complex issue that's hard to solve, but it certainly can, can, be, can be partially healed um, by explaining to others and being aware of what's going on. Awesome.